You're welcome back. It's still business morning on Channel Television. And do remember that the MPC decision will be on live in our special extended business incorporated edition today at 1.30. So do join us then for that information. And just before we get into all of that, uh, a little bit of uh, talking about being a billionaire. I remember a popular slogan some time ago, to be a millionaire, think like a millionaire. Well, to be a billionaire, it's all about habits. Habits mm -hmm. define us, they determine our decisions, mm -hmm. and our decisions determine our destiny. How successful or unsuccessful will be in life. This is one principle which is captured in the book Billionaire Habits and the author Dr. Stephen Akintayo, the managing director of GTEx Homes, joins us to talk about this mm -hmm. uh, habits that will make yeah. us billionaires. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I hope, Good I, morning, I, hope I have those habits. I hope. <laughs> you are, you're about to find out. Yeah, find out yeah. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, Good to see I know, you. I know your being a billionaire doesn't have anything to do with the MPC. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> because that's our that's a, that's a focus like today in Nigeria. Yeah. We are waiting for 1.30 and yes. all that. Yes. But uh, you, you said uh, you, you talked about uh, the habits of yeah. Being yes. a billionaire, what are some of those habits and how do you form them? Do they come from your parents when you're growing up? Do you, you know, adapt them as you're growing up? Or mm. DNA? <laughs> I, I think the same way you can, you've never seen a born journalist, mm. right? So you, you don't have a, um, that, you know, you're, there are, of course, people who by parent maybe through will, but in terms of the habits, you are not born with it, you develop them over time. And uh, one of the ways to develop them is actually through apprenticeship because professors don't teach them the university. Mm -hmm. So you don't learn them through formal education, but by meeting people who are, who are billionaires and learning from them uh, is the way to the top. Uh, and everybody who has ever become a billionaire, even in Nigeria, you look at Dangote, how he was mentored by his mm -hmm. uncle. You always see that trace of how to learn under somebody else. I was an apprentice to somebody else. Uh, you know, I, I pick up certain principles. And usually the story is always that I, I probably, you know, use my allowance or I got a loan. Or, but the money they got is never commensurate to the wealth they built. So it tells you that it was really the habit that led to the growth, you know, and not, not necessarily what you get yeah okay so what are some of those habits well there are many of them discussed in the book um you know one of it uh, which is i often share is about two poor people cannot help themselves one must first get to the top before he throws the rope to help the other one and so one of the habits is actually you know building a culture of connecting with people who are financially better than you so that you can of course move to the top but oftentimes we don't even do that. You see, um, there's a song, Olo Shore, Olo Otoshi, Shore Otoshi, right? Now for those who understand, don't <laughs> understand your Meaning the poor is a friend of the poor, the rich is a friend of the rich. And usually that is the reason why you see poverty being perpetrated from one generation to the other among poor people. And wealth almost remaining. Except when you then have a bastard child that wastes, you know, and squanders the money. Mm -hmm. But usually you see the wealth still circling because of the network. Because your network determines your, your network. network. Okay. Is but that what? why you said in your book that the rich are arrogant? Are they arrogant? <laughs> no, the, the, no, no, they're not really. But the perception of a poor person is that if you're wealthy, you're arrogant. Because it takes certain principles, right, to build wealth. You know, you, for example, I can't remember the last time I... I bought a Shwebi, and I probably can afford to start a company that produces that, right? But it's just a, I mean, it's just a waste. At my wedding, we're less than 20, right? You know, I just don't have the luxury of wasting money. Right, so, <laughs> so, always so if you, these are some of the habits. These are some of the habits. So if you come to me as a relative and you yeah. want, you tell me of how your great grandfather has died and they must know, they must take, and as your uncle or your brother, I must give you money. And I'm asking, I don't even do such. Right, personal, it's not a habit that I have for myself. So why should I necessarily do that? So you can then term that to be arrogance. So instead of funding other people's habits, yeah, basically. Exactly. All right, so what is the most important trait mm. to be a billionaire? What's the most important habit to cultivate? Well, I think it's, it's, it's diligence. You know, uh, there are two, I was sharing a devotion with my staff this morning that there are two 
uh, things I've never seen with any billionaire. I've never seen a billionaire that is a gossiper. Mm. You know. I, I, again, we are not talking of corrupt politicians here, you know. So when we when we analyze <laughs> when we analyze billionaires, we're talking about people who work hard for their money, their entrepreneurs, and or, you know, so so that people get it. Because in this part of the world, whenever you say certain things, what comes to mind is how they stole six sixteen point something <laughs> billion, you know. So we're talking about people who legitimately made money. So I've not seen never seen a, a, a billionaire that is a gossiper. He's straight up. I don't like this, I don't like this, you know. Uh, what he says behind you will probably say your presence. But the second one, I've never seen a lazy billionaire. Right? I've never seen a billionaire that is lazy. Yeah, I woke up you know, after three this morning. Okay. You know, I, I, and that's the attitude. And I keep, I was sharing with that, I said, I work averagely 16 hours a day. I cannot be at the same level with the person who does eight hours a day. It doesn't work that way. But, you know, being a billionaire is one thing, but actually keeping that mm. status mm. is another thing. How mm. do you maintain that status? Well, it's because there are three ways to this. You need to know how to make money. That's step one. You need to know how to manage money. That's step two. You need to know how to multiply money. So where you are talking about now is managing money. Right, and that's you know, really a place of mentorship and sound advisors, right? So you have to have great mentors who have gone ahead of you, because success is not a destination; it's a journey, right? You know, I have a lot of you know. I mean, average of my mentors are billionaires in dollars that I'm learning from to say, you know, I, I've just started. I need your help, mm -hmm. and and that's their attitude. Really, it's not like you get somewhere and you have arrived. It's a journey keep going and yeah. talking about management habits and mm. the parts in the book when you talked about management you mentioned mm. emotional intelligence yes yes yeah and that seems yes. to be something that is in the ict world yes. these days so yes how do you blend the money management and mm. emotional intelligence yes. so you know what I, I i i think i came up with that concept of em, uh, emotional intelligence when it comes to investment now, usually when you say emotional intelligence, general emotional intelligence, particularly when it comes to relationship with people. Uh, but I came up with a term, emotional intelligence, when it comes to uh, the concept of investment. So you see people do um, all manner of Ponzi schemes.